Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the new Mythic of Aquaticus, as well as opening some keys for it, as well as showing several teams from early game all the way to uh, late game. As far as this Mythic, it is a little bit later in the week, of course it came in uh, last Friday, but I was not around to cover it, so I'll be covering it now. Uh, of course, it is still available, it's actually, uh, not sure why it doesn't show the timer over here, but it's available still for another one day and seven hours of this recording, so you still have a whole day until Friday reset the end of Thursday to uh, go and uh, still get this thing from Glory Gem Guild and VIP Chess. And it is a pretty decent mythic at that. It is very similar to that of a blue version of Infernus, similar to how Obsidious is a brown version of Infernus. He's going under unowned here, should be the only thing we don't have. And Aquaticus, it does uh, Light Splash damage to uh, three different enemies randomly. Uh, light Splash is a 25% splash, so it hits the random target for the full amount of damage. And then the two adjacent troops to it will take uh, one-fourth the damage uh, that it would normally have. So let's say it was 30, it would end up taking around a uh, 7, I believe it rounds uh, downwards. Um, so that's basically how that would end up functioning. So that would probably hit around an 8, given that it's a little bit higher, probably round up. But... Um, yeah, it looks like it's going to be pretty solid because it has uh, more damage than that of Infernus. And Infernus already had a pretty substantial amount of damage. It gets to explode half the blues on the board, which is both good and bad. Of course, Infernus has a random four explode, which is good because it's going to be consistent since it's not relevant on any kind of color. Biggest issue with this is if the enemy denies blue, like if you're, let's say, using this on, let's say, Blue Guild War, uh, the enemy's probably going to have something that denies your blue. And this isn't necessarily going to be that good in that kind of situation. Obviously, you'd still probably use it in those kind of situations, but uh, uh, that blue getting countered will definitely put this troop at a disadvantage as it would substantially lower the amount of explosions that it would do. However, if there are 10 or more blue on the board, it will be doing more explosions than Inferno. So really good to have blue storm with it, as well as board clear to make sure that you keep the board that way. And uh, then you'll just be able to keep uh, 10 plus blues. So that would be able to gain uh, better value or at least eight plus. So that gets the same value. The biggest downside to this troop is, aside from the uh, restriction on the one color, is it does not have a blue storm attached to it. Unlike Infernus, which has red storm and uh, Obsidius with brown storm attached, it does not specifically have the storm attached. So you do have to waste a whole nother troop slot to be able to do this. Jar of Eyes is a pretty good option with its perpetual uh, blue storm that can do off a cast, as well as uh, pretty much anything that could end up doing a blue storm, either some kind of weapon using the mythic that perpetually has blue storm or any of those options are gonna probably be your most solid option. You definitely will have to put a blue storm onto your team in some way, shape or form in order to make this function, which is probably its biggest downside. Uh, the only other instance where you could kind of get away with not doing Blue Storm is if your team is not necessarily blue oriented, uh, which you can end up doing with that. It will do less explosions, but if you're, let's say, using her with Infernus, you could just use Infernus's Red Storm and be fine. So uh, you know, aren't always necessarily gonna need a Blue Storm, but it's definitely highly advised to go that route. Besides from that, similar to all the other Infernus-like troops, it does get four times of a effect every single time it actually turns, and this one has Submerge. The merge could situationally be better than Infernus's burn. It's obviously a lot more defensive rather than offensive in that uh, it's going to be really good against AoE teams. Anything that hits all enemies with either split damage, all enemies with uh, AoE or anything like that, this is going to be really solid against since one single extra turn will essentially help to negate out all that damage since the merge helps dodge those kind of uh, attacks. Uh, this will be pretty good with boost ratio related things too. So let's say, for example, the uh, other mythic from uh, Merlantis. Uh, the Undyne ends up boost ratioing based on uh, the Merfolk and the um, uh, the Submerge, so you'd be able to end up getting a lot more damage off of him based on the uh, team composition that you would have just by simply getting everything uh, submerged. So uh, also has some spell reduction on it, which makes it uh, synergize a little bit with its um, with its submerge that ends up having off extra turn giving it both uh, even more options to negate against uh, various attacks. So overall, really going to be spell resistant compared to that of the other two. Obsidious has score reduction. This thing is extremely spell resistant is the bottom line. But anyways, let's go open some keys and go get this thing and then go show some teams. We'll start with gem keys and hopefully get lucky. We'll do it 50 at a time. Do it on first 50, go. Nope, Wild Queen. Pretty sure we've already gotten all the copies we ever need of her. Autumn Imp, that is still available right now. Spooky Imp comes out next uh, month, uh, start of October. Good start seeing Spooky Imp. Holy St. Astros, good for giving humans 50% mana. Your Stronghorn is useless, normally. Uh, Bone Dragon used to be the best thing in the entire game until it got nerfed into Oblivion. Tesla is amazing for early game and mid game, but I don't personally use it much later on. Uh, that troop is useless, whatever that was, I forgot how to pronounce it. All three of those are generally not used too much. Oh, Grapple Pot. Well, I guess, actually, Grapple Pot's basically dead content now, ever since they ended up changing how. Um, they end up changing. There it is. 
Aquaticus, ever since they end up changing, or not changing, ever since they end up adding Gob Truffle, they end up making, um, indirectly, um, Queen Grapple Pot, like, near useless, because you just use Truffle in every single situation. But anyways, hey, Toloka as well. But, uh, I think I just needed copies of, oh no, I finally upgraded them. But, there we go, Aquaticus. That did not hit our gem key stack too badly. That was only about 500 gem keys, I'll take it. That was definitely nowhere near as bad as the previous time. Of course, with uh, most new mythics, it is good to go and uh, use orbs on them, simply because uh, of any rarity, you would get the most amount of value from using them on uh, mythics. So for this, we're not even going to bother uh, using any resources. All we'll simply do is uh, use a major green and a major orange, and I'll max out uh, everything on it without needing to uh, spend anything. Since it's a mythic, you're pretty much always going to want to do that, assuming you have the spare orbs uh, laying around, as they cost the most amount of resources. So it'll have the most amount of savings by doing it on specifically a uh, mythic. There we go. We got her maxed. We can go see what her stats are now and put her into a bunch of teams. Don't ever go for that. It's a waste of money. Okay, next thing. Let's go use this thing three times. So I have three teams I want to show. Um, two that are kind of more towards end game, and one uh, cheaper one if you don't have uh, other options to uh, use it with. First one I want to do, obviously I haven't gotten to test it yet, but these should uh, end up working. Uh, the first one I want to go for is Aquaticus with um, with an Infernus. Figured, why not? Uh, she doesn't have a storm, so might as well put something else on the team. That will be covering the storm without needing to go too far out of her way. And uh, Infernus Aquatis, uh, Aquaticus combo is uh, essentially what we're going for uh, right here. Oh, I should have probably put all three of them in, but we'll, we'll do them one at a time. Okay, take that long to put them in. But let's go and uh, let him just get tapped by Skull there. We're actually going to probably take a brown. We are using Titan with this in order to get um, barrier spam, just so we can tank it out. Uh, we do not have a good move here, do we? We'll stick a green for now, I guess. Okay, we do get brown off of uh, Lucky Cascade from the top. So there's our Storm. Actually, it's running Skady right now, which is um, really good for us, because we'll be able to utilize that for our uh, mana that we need. And one nice thing about uh, doing uh, explosions, too, is we do get to accumulate it for absolutely everyone. So, um, yeah, she'll be helping us with that blue storm there. It'd be kind of funny. Because we actually need blue storm with this team, and she's basically just handing it to us perpetually. Uh, it's something you generally don't run on defend, because you can very easily give the enemy a uh, good storm that they need. In this case, actually ends up working out perfectly, so go figure. Of course, we do keep replacing it out with Mountain Crusher, but he keeps replacing it back every single turn, so it is fine. Uh, so here we could already kind of see one of the slight issues that this has, and that is the explosions are not random like in Furnace, so we are really dependent on those blues being in good locations because we kind of already know what's going to be exploding. It's going to be some amount of these blues, whereas in Furnace it could be anywhere. But with that being said, since we kind of already know where they're going to be partially exploding, uh, if none of them seem like it's a good location or there's just not enough of them on the board, like right now we're only getting a 4. RJ4 is fine. But um, we can kind of already tell where the explosions will be uh, as far as where they might be. Of course, it's still random. So let's say right now there's nine. We know four of them are going to explode, which four we do not know, but it, we know their locations that they could possibly be. Whereas in Furnace, it's, we'll get a wider spread even if the board isn't set up correctly for uh, doing such. But uh, she does have the higher damage, so uh, spamming her for that definitely is helpful, especially when there's only one or two targets left, as the amount would be uh, quite a bit more noticeable compared to that of a uh, in Furnace's amount of damage. But still both really high damage sources to uh, have your hands on. Uh, next up, we have ourselves a uh, blue Aquaticus running uh, pure blue. Uh, you can also end up running this instead of Jar of Eyes with uh, first slot with uh, the Doom Weapon. But I figured more people would probably have this than the uh, blue Doom Weapon, so I end up going with uh, this. If I had a blue Doom Weapon, uh, I can't remember its name. It's the Doom Skull creating one. The, um, actually, you could probably just type in Doom and it comes right up. Uh, let's see. The, uh, not that. The uh, Doomed Blade was the word I was looking for. If I'm not mistaken, this should have a blue storm on... Uh, oh, wait, never mind, it doesn't. Never mind, I lied. I thought this thing had blue storm on cast. Never mind, don't run that. Just run Jar of Eyes. <laughs> but yeah, oops, uh, don't keep our galley there. That is not what we want. We definitely want a Aquaticus. So we'll put Aquaticus there. Let me go change the other one too real quick, just so I don't forget. That'd be a gigantic fail. Anyways, blue Aquaticus. So we're running this as, obviously, pure blue. Uh, do, of course, keep in mind... Um, you might have a liability running this on blue day if they have specifically a troop that counters out your blue. But if they don't, it will definitely be fine. You may also notice based on this team, it uses a lot of green. So uh, you could also technically get away with this on uh, green Guild War Day. So ideally, what we want to do is immediately take a green in order to uh, get him to full mana. Uh, that did not happen. He did not surge, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but we'll go take that over, start getting Jar of Eyes. We want to rush Jar of Eyes, ideally, in most of these situations. Uh, draw of Eyes and or Corvash. Corvash to uh, deny their mana. Draw of Eyes to get everything rolling. 
improvise definitely being the more important one to get up first. So we'll do that, get our explosion now, and we should be good to go. This creates Blue Storm every single time we cast it, and uh, then we can just kind of go crazy from there. Uh, we have ourselves a uh, really high um, uh, boost ratio here. Ends up great, uh, boosting based on... Um, it boosts based on Merfolk and Submerge allies at an 8 times boost ratio, as I mentioned before. It ends up also submerging all blue allies if they weren't already submerged. And it gets to silence all blue enemies. So it has quite a few things that gets to synergize with the fact that we have a bunch of submerges uh, going on here. And of course we can get it all back just by simply taking one single extra turn. I am using Tidecaller here, however I'm not specifically using it for its uh, submerge. Since, well, we can't really use it for its submerge. We're using it for its uh, explosion that we have here. Uh, which ends up doing it onto a blue every single time we go for extra turn. Has cleanse, so we're going to be taking a lot of extra turns with this team, so we don't ever need to worry about any kind of status effects on it. Has half mana start, obviously any hero class with that will end up working out well, and ends up giving us the extra blue. It also, once fully macked, does give a little bit of extra magic to your uh, merfolks, but uh, that's not going to be too, too relevant. But of any of the hero classes, it seems like the best synergy. It also gives the boost ratio to uh, Undyne. Since it counts as both a merfolk and assuming you're using a blue weapon, also as a blue. Uh, but we'll go and I guess we'll go for another explosion on this. Just this normal four amount, but nice amount of damage with its uh, triple hit. Uh, we can go and just use this on whatever the biggest threat is on the opposing team. So right here it seems to be just off the top since those two will get silenced from our cast. So we'll just simply go for that. Get a gigantic hit there with all of our submerged boost ratio and we're good to go. Go for uh, Corvash, obviously we just use as a, uh, a frontline tank while also draining their uh, mana is uh, mainly what he's up there for. And uh, yeah, we just keep spamming Jar of Eyes, cast Corvash if they're not already silenced and if we need to go get rid of the mana. Or right here, we could even just go for the kill with it. So I'm not sure if that's going to be the new meta for Blue Guild War. Probably not necessarily. If anything, it might almost seem like it could be used a little bit better on Green Day just because there might be counters on Blue Day. But of course, you could just simply replace out Corvash and you already have yourself a team ready to go for that. But uh, it seems like a decent combo. Probably one of our more favorite ones that I've been using with us so far. But uh, definitely gets your job done. Jar of Eyes in general, well, it does have full mana conflict with uh, the Aquaticus in that it blocks it completely. It does seem to be one of the better options to be using with it. It has a lot of mana accumulation, it has a backup summon, and it has Blue Storm. So you get a lot of things covered. And you're most likely using Hero on, on most of your teams anyways. So it seems to just be the way to go. And this you end up getting from a All Seeing Eye uh, event. So it will be rolling back around in about two months or so if you don't already have it. But I'm pretty sure most people have this as this is one of the core few uh, really good uh, faction uh, weapons that uh, have ever been released. But if you don't have it, you'll be able to get it again uh, pretty easily in about two months. Just keep an eye out for the next All Seeing Eye. Ha ha ha. Keep an eye out for All Seeing Eye. And anyways, let me go find a real team and then we'll go fight the uh, cheap team against. I guess we'll just take the middle run against a bunch of dragons. And of course, this uh, mythic is really good against anything that runs full AoE. Uh, AoE troops are going to be really bad since they hit all enemies and submerge protects against anything that hits all enemies. So Dragon Soul will do zero damage. Catchers will do zero damage. They're going to be pretty protected from this. So right here is just a cheap uh, team to use with the uh, new mythic. Everything on this team is epic and below except for the weapon, but you get it easily at round level 100 or so from about 30 or so hero mastery. Oh, we're just using Anu Scepter. This is mostly for the excess blue and just to force some board control that we can use for mana accumulation. Just using Titan as a standard uh, frontline tank. Uh, we're using the uh, Daughter of Ice because we need Blue Storm and this is to feed us blue as well as for Blue Storm. We have our banner set to double yellow because we're denying out our red and because the excess yellow will leak into our Aquaticus. And obviously this whole team is just feeding right over to uh, Aquaticus as far as uh, everything that we're going to be doing with it. So uh, we get our Blue Storm. That'll be able to get us rolling. Uh, we can go and do a Destroy here. I'm not sure if it's a good one. We could do it for purple. If there's 12, I guess we go for it. And there is 15, so we'll go for it. Get a little bit of Cascade there. Looks like even a uh, extra turn as well, so that ends up working out. Uh, we can then go for probably just another Andrew Scepter. I'm trying to see if we have an extra turn anywhere. So it looks like we might end up denying yellow, since that'll be enough mana to get us uh, rolling. And we get some blue out of it. Let's give him a little bit, but we just go cast right into a Valkyrie and uh, get our Aquaticus going, and then just keep spamming it. And we still have our Blue Storm active from when we casted the um, uh, Daughter of Ice. So we'll be able to still keep utilizing that. And it's starting to get low, so let's go do it again. And boom, we got our Blue Storm again. And we can start repeating it uh, all over again. And if we start losing some, we can just simply start taking Browns for uh, Barrier. And just keep spamming this in order to uh, kill them out as our main damage source. Or really much our only damage source in this uh, particular team. But a really cheap team. Every single thing in this uh, team is uh, relatively easy to accumulate. But the hardest thing probably being fully traded uh, Daughter of Ice, but is only an epic, so you can find it in those summoning stones on occasional weeks, as well as just, uh, just relatively common as a drop. 
Might not necessarily have it right now, but if you don't have it right now, you'd probably get it pretty soon off of random glory key drops, gem key drops, and stuff like that. If you had enough key to randomly get an Aquaticus, you'll probably get that very soon. But we'll go take that out, get another little triple hit. Looks like we'll need one more in order to kill it out. And uh, one nice thing about this thing, uh, team too, is since we are using Valkyrie, we'll be able to passively farm souls. And more often than not, every single battle, you should be reaching the max capacity of souls. If you were uh, doing a composition similar to that. There we go. And that's what she ends up working with if you're running with uh, very cheap options. But yeah, that is Aquaticus. Definitely not the absolute best mythic in the game, but a great damage source for uh, mid-game and early game. I personally do consider Infernus to be a bit better than Aquaticus, just because Aquaticus has two really big liabilities. If it gets denied on blue, it's going to do bad, and it does not have a storm attached to it, so you have to go and put it somewhere else on your team or waste the entire slot for it. So, uh, or use it as a hard counter against something that does have a lot of blue storm, like let's say a Jar of Ice team. Um, but other than that, it doesn't seem like it's going to be used an excessively high amount. Definitely really, really high damage. But uh, it's all cast damage, and it doesn't really synergize too well with Queen Atania. If it would go down, down like a cast spam team, uh, you could end up trying that. But um, overall, it seems like it's just going to be a little bit above average. Um, Inferno is still better. It's probably better than an Obsidious, though, just because there's plenty of other options for stun, whereas... There are some options for Submerge, such as, let's say, uh, Merfolk Hero Class, uh, where you can spam quite a bit of Submerge. But she is definitely, by far, the best Submerging troop in the game. And there are some instances where you're definitely going to be needing that as a utility, such as, for example, that last team where we're up against a bunch of dragons doing that kind of damage. And if you're up against that in higher level content, let's say, like, Invasions or something, where the opposing team just happens to be uh, a lot of, like, the AoE towers, it could definitely come into play, or any other game mode like Delves, where you're up against a lot of really heavy damaging AoEs, and you just need a uh, good protection option against it. Could even be a hard counter in Guild War Day, since it is a mythic, it does cover three different Guild War Days, and you might even plop it on your team literally on, like, let's say a yellow day, just for the sake of countering out AoEs if the enemy happens to be using it. Most defend teams on the current meta, particularly in late game, don't do that, because Submerge just ran a lot on Merfolk and on Frost Mage and stuff like that, but uh, if they happen to be running AoEs and no other damage source, or mostly just AoEs, um, you could definitely just put that as a hard counter against that, get a single extra turn, and then they just won't be hitting you for a little while unless you cast. Do keep in mind, Submerge does drop if you uh, cast or take a skull out of it. However, of course, one single extra turn gets it right back, so it's pretty easy to just keep cycling it over and over again. But anyways, that is the new Mythic of Aquaticus. Definitely above average. I would definitely say try for it. If you uh, haven't already tried for it, still have a whole another uh, day to go and attempt for it. And I wish you all the best of luck if you do. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. And I will catch all of you later. Goodbye, everyone, and have a wonderful week.